let's do this. Stephen Shore on Common Places. I got this book as a gift after wrapping for the movie Reality that is going to be on HBO and Max. You can watch it on May 29th, 2023. But yes, this book has nothing to do with the movie. I was surprised that I got this as a gift because I never told our DP that I liked Stephen Shore. But I appreciate it because I saw his exhibition at the Met or at the MoMA, one of those museums in New York City. And this book is definitely hyped, especially a lot of people who like landscapes. Prefer to use Stephen Shore's photographs as reference. It's interesting because the first photo, it's labeled US Highway 22, Union, New Jersey, which literally is very close to home. But this was photographed in 1974, so I'm not even sure if this all looks the same. Probably not. However, little known fact, if you're not from New Jersey, I actually hate driving on Route 22. It's the most chaotic and busiest highways because both sides have so many stores. So you always feel like one of the cars are just going to merge into your lane and just hit you. Yeah, it's very nerve wracking. But Stephen Shore is an American photographer that is really well known for his like I said, American-esque aesthetic of photographs. And for me, honestly, I just know him for this work. I don't really know most of his work. And it's interesting to see this book in person. So, this is a series of trips across North America between 1973 and 1979. I wasn't born yet. And obviously, this is a lot to read at first. And like I said, I haven't opened the book, so I am going through it for the first time, just as you if you've never seen this book. The series as a diary. It's interesting to see what people take photos of. For example, why the portrait? Why the TV? The book? The building? says cosmetology so this is just a introduction title page this one is shot in Idaho I really love the colors it's as if it was all just set up with the tones of brown and gold and gray and white and the blue they just all complement each other and you question why they just showed the feet and the partial of the legs and not the whole body or the person for me I always feel like whenever they never show a face it's a sign that they want you to keep wondering who it could possibly be and the suitcase is not completely closed so that also makes you wonder what the heck is in the suitcase or what's on the TV screen sometimes I feel like I wish I lived in this time because I love the cars the way how the exteriors of buildings were back then now these are all set cars when you're on a movie set cars don't look like this anymore it's just like a very rare to see it this is in Wisconsin 
Michigan, but they look so similar as if they were just in one place. Pennsylvania and Wyoming. And then there's like a slither of the rainbow plus the reflection of the motel sign. You just think of composition and movement, how like these two sides or a corner of a window makes your eyes go towards this way. And then the movement of the cars being lined up this way and then the alternative colors. And then here, there's just like so many things going on. And then for me, I'm always bittersweet when they cut part of a car or part of a body or something. It makes me question why the photographer did that. And it's just cool that they, he incorporated the rainbow and the reflection. It's not easy to get both in one photo. This one says California. Estelle Marsh, Texas. The red and the red complement each other. Uh, red and green always complement. And that's why they're probably side by side. And maybe for people who don't live in the US, they imagine back in the day, this is like the American female look. Very political, regal looking. I don't know who she is, so I can't <laughs> explain or give any feedback. This is in Wyoming at Yellowstone National Park. Never been there yet. It's, it's interesting because it's just a tree of some sort standing on its own with no leaves. And I haven't seen anything like that since London because their trees for some reason have no leaves. That's a whole thing that I can't explain. Uh, and something that you probably can start to see is a common factor is that there's just no people. It's very desolate, very empty, very Edward Hopper. Painter, we don't know him, but still has this Americana during the day look. To it. Uh, this is in North Dakota. This is in Arizona. You just wonder like who are the people that are in these spaces and there's a very common palette with the blues and the greens and the yellows and brown toned. Oregon it's pretty interesting how like it's a billboard and it's like as if you wish this looks like it goes with it but then you don't know I don't know if it's actually behind it or they just gave that imagination Michigan it's like as if you have like a fake window but <laughs> you don't have a real window Here is Ohio, lots of blues. People can relate to parking lots, big buildings for who knows what, could be conventions, malls, concerts, things like that. A picture within a picture. This is Utah and the decoration of the frame. And then another frame. And then this is an also in Utah. Some diner with some cantaloupe. Native American aesthetic. This is in Michigan. Minnesota. Two photos, they complement each other because of the tones. But other than that, I don't know if there's a connection 
between the two because they're in two different states. It's interesting how this is during the day, but like you see a reflection on the glass. But still, again, very desolate. North Dakota, prayer, God, paperwork of sorts. Again, just storefronts. This is in Pennsylvania. Beauty salon, jewel engrave. Wisconsin. Union National Bank drive entrance. So it's like there's the foreground and then mid and then background. And you still have that like detail of the car. Arizona TPs in a modern esque because they counter each other with how like life used to just have Native Americans and then now it's just like being occupied by or colonized by other people. Arizona This is finally first of seeing Florida. You can see palm trees for once. The difference of weather, the beach, blue skies, Palm Beach, Florida. Lots of greens, different furniture, aesthetic inside. New York, this is home. A lot of skyscrapers, phone boots. The first time you see like in a landscape, there are people. Uh, it's crazy how like phone boots don't really exist. Uh, Crosby is a very busy street on Soho. Uh, a lot of fashion stores. This is in Tennessee. Bigger streets, people, surprisingly, but you don't see faces. Uh, this is in West Virginia. Reflections again in the glass of the light bulbs, colors. Tennessee, red and green, complementing each other. And this is in Ohio. It's like as if I had to guess what type of film he used. Looked like it was shot on Kodak Gold. Portra, for sure, but it just gives me Kodak Gold vibes. This is in New Jersey, West Virginia. Still the emptiness of a diner, it's like as if the place just opened or it's just about to the sunset. Pennsylvania, Nicholas Bader. Shirt pops, expression. Everyone's just very like serious. Uh, not no crazy expressions. Pennsylvania. Red and green, very common. Pennsylvania. You know what's crazy? In Pennsylvania, when I drive through there, I've always noticed that the street signs are so up high. Like when you're driving, you have to like look up. It's like, I don't understand why they do that. But it's like, see, it's higher than the store. Pennsylvania. New York. This is in Maine, first one in Maine. She's like looking straight at the camera.
Maine. This is Connecticut. It's interesting how you see like the one woman in pink, as if like that was just set up. This is also in Maine. Mexico drive-in lunch. So random to see that in me. Same. Parking lots, cars, houses, buildings. You're like seeing a common thread. Also in Maine. But you could see like different houses, but like same state. Also same state. Uh, this one is in Massachusetts. It looks like it has a face. All green. New York. Upstate, I believe. Watertown. Never heard of Watertown. Massachusetts. Massachusetts as well. It's crazy how it's like all like different states, but like similar palette. Massachusetts. This one looks like it's like a toy diorama scene. Like it doesn't even look real. This one, I think this portrait looks really out of place just because the colors, it looks like it's not, it doesn't have that same light same color scheme looks a bit dark than the other photos main yellow and blue complementing each other again this is in alberta canada question mark unsure didn't say canada Oh yeah, Ontario, yeah, so Canada. Crazy how it's another country, but it looks like <laughs> it's still a part of America. Well, North America, but like the US. This is same. This house is like a whole thing with the different colors. This is all same location, same cars, sky, parking lot. <laughs> Green, common. The lights and the shadows. Just very empty. I feel like this, for some reason, is a bit less anxious to photograph just because there's just like no people i'm so used to like going up to people and asking them if i could take their photo and you know directing them and things like that and this is just like walking around or driving and then just taking a photo of locations and i'm not saying it's easy i'm just saying it's just makes me feel less anxious feels a bit more easygoing um, but the thing is like you just hope that you'd find something a random chair but then again complementary colors I don't even know where this place is Saska Chewan don't quote me on that still in Canada didn't think there'd be Canadian locations here Bam, that's Calgary, Alberta, have family there. Holiday Inn, you'll always find a Holiday Inn. Montana, back in the US. Still, they all look so similar. It's like, doesn't really look any different. Open Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so it's only open on the weekend. This is in Texas, Arkansas, San Francisco, missing trolley.
uh, first portrait where it's a bit more intimate but still straight on looking. This is in Texas. This one is like an aerial view, different Texas as well. It's still desolate. Like you don't really see anybody. It's crazy. Arkansas. So you just see a lot of like lines, perspective, lots of things going on. California, Montana. It's like kind of like not so sunny as if like the rain or like it's about to rain. New Mexico. Again with the reflections and the glass and the windows. Maybe there's a couple thing going on. This is an Oregon pop of color. New Mexico pool. But still looks empty like no one goes to it. Washington. We have Idaho, a bunch of vegetables. Something with green, green, lots of green. <laughs> California, Texas, again, shapes, rectangles. This is like a bit random. This is in California, it's just like a tree. And yes, again, color scheme, same, but it's not buildings. Streets, empty road, desolate, isolation. This is like really random. Uh, Texas, this one's in New York. It's funny how you can see like there's a drawing on the glass. New Mexico, Texas. Wonder if like you've been to these states and like is this what you imagine when you hear the name of the state? Portrait also feels a bit off. I mean, just doesn't for me feel like it goes with the rest of the photos. This is in Arizona, New Mexico. A lot of motels, a lot of cars. It's like. As if there's civilization because you see these things but then you don't see the people or the people are just like not really engaged with each other Texas South Carolina Los Angeles this is the very popular um, La Brea Ave Los Angeles California photo that a lot of people use as a reference or actually still go to the Chevron gas station to take a photo um, even if it's not exactly the same but when you go to this exhibition all these prints are like printed really big it's much smaller scale in a photo book but still pretty big uh, but not as big in the as in the exhibition Texas LA Philly, Pennsylvania. This one, New York, self portrait of him. Sounds a bit right, just being in like a little apartment because it's so expensive to live in New York. Georgia, Greensboro, North Carolina, Texas. The outfits, it's like you compare with the states and the people that live in them. Another Texas. It's 
it's like the outfits they like so different back in the day and now hairstyles makeup just a bunch of cars that look identical and then it's interesting how like you think this is just like a front of a fence but then it's like the cars just happen to fit into the entrance um, and frame and again red and green I don't know his portraits I feel like are not my strongest fondest uh, that he's taken maybe that's why he sticks to landscapes just doesn't seem like it's place he the person is place well and the expression of the scotch billboard texas maryland something about drive-in movie theaters banks abandoned buildings then you'll have like a well you know house kept house texas John F. Kennedy said, Ours is truth. Texas, American US color, patriotic colors, glass again, highways, no one being there. This one's really cool. I love like the light and how it doesn't overexpose. It's like just seems. Like a scene in a movie. This is Arizona. Same. This is like more bluish tones. Arizona. It could also just be confused with California. Pennsylvania. It's just like more urban when you go to the East Coast. Florida. <laughs> Random. Just like, you don't even know who that is. Florida. But the colors, like blue and the greens, blue. Pop. Uh, faded pink. Person. Florida. Miami Beach. Same serious expression. Reds. Reds always pop. They always make your eye really want to look. And then this is really nice. The greens. Even though it's a simple photo of ping pong, it's just, I don't know, something about it. It's just appealing, I guess, because the color scheme compared to like this, it's like all white, and I don't know, it's not really appealing to look at a bad tub that looks like this. Back in the day, McDonald's in Florida. This is probably the person that was in the other photograph. Still mysterious, not showing the entire face. And heavy smoker. Lots of greens again. Still in Florida. Reds and greens. Interesting. The outfit, the attire, the bank's book, the emptiness of the leftover items, shoe, comb, towel. Old used car. This is in New York, upstate in Ithaca. Florida, like how the light is reflecting on the water and on the hair. This is a nice photo too. It's like a sports ad. 
Florida. It just looks aesthetically pleasing to me. Same as this one. <laughs> I was just wondering what the heck's going on here. And it's super sharp. Catfish Hunter. Blues and greens. Yankees. Shot in Florida though. Hmm. Another aerial view of a parking lot and cars. This is nice. I just like how it just is like a candid shot of people getting on a boat. Same as this one, just very candid. It's just like a fly in a wall. This is in Montana, Nevada. Wyoming. It's crazy how far away he is like to capture this like whole landscape and the people are so tiny. They're all like doing different gestures. Marilyn. The blues, white. Montana. Hmm. So then there's like a whole Q&A after, which you just have to buy the book to go read and then post cards with his photos from the series in Texas. I love stuff like this because like this is how my sketchbooks are. It's like photos, things that I find and then like a lot of writing like I do the same, especially like when I'm journaling. Cause you forget where the heck you take photos or whatever details and memories go with them. So he has like 16 exposures made and he has like addresses and streets and like states and just details about the places. Random swimming pool and a farm. And that's pretty much it. That was just a quick run through, through Stephen Shore's Uncommon Places. And yeah, if you have any thoughts, comments, you can leave it down below in the video. And thank you again for watching. I hope that I can continue to share with you books that I have and I know that my thoughts are not necessarily the most articulate but these are literally honestly how I look through books and what I think about when I go through them so thank you again for watching stay tuned till the next video it's the end of the video so don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't it will help me in the long run okay bye